You, uh, you're here to honor your friend, uh, Dick Schultz. Right. What is it about Dick Schultz that you'd love to tell this great audience? Well, I've known him for so many years. He was an assistant coach at Iowa when I was playing basketball at the University of Illinois. Uh, he was also the baseball coach at Iowa. And so the relationship more or less started back then in the, in the 60s. That's a long time ago. But I've had the privilege of knowing Dick through his career and his journey is unbelievable in terms of the things that he's accomplished. And up until about a year ago, I would see him at least once a year. He would come to Phoenix, we would sit in the conference room and get caught up. And he's never stopped giving back. That's who he is. And his, his faith is right at the top of the list. There's no question about it. I have great admiration for Dick Schultz. And I, I, love, I love that because while you're continuing to uplift young men in this sport, you're also, I mean, it's beautiful how you always honor those who came before you, before so many of us, and that's what Dick Schultz is. He, yes. He's a true legend. Absolutely. Um, as a coach, a teacher, an administrator, let's take a look at this video and meet him a little more. Dick Schultz grew up in Kellogg, Iowa, a small town of 750 people. In high school, Dick played basketball and baseball, and during his senior year also served as the junior high basketball coach. He continued his journey in sports at Central College in Pella, Iowa as a three-sport athlete, landing him pro offers in football and baseball. But Dick chose to hang up the cleats and pursue a career in coaching. Schultz moved quickly through the ranks and ended up at the University of Iowa for about two or three years, I was the head baseball coach and the assistant basketball coach. <laughs> in 1970, Schultz was named head basketball coach at the University of Iowa. He then served as athletic director at Cornell and the University of Virginia before being named the executive director of the NCAA. In 1995, Dick accepted the position of executive director of the United States Olympic Committee, where he served for seven years. Through a lifetime of service, Dick's influence on the world of sports remains unmatched. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the recipient of the Athletes in Action Lifetime Achievement Award, Dick Schultz. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you. So thank nice you. to have you here. Can we have Schultz. some chairs? Um, uh, Jerry, by the way, before you take off, I would like, I, I want to make sure Dick hears this. He has had a special influence specifically on you, on, on your life. Can, can you share that for everybody to hear? Well, when you have a relationship with a man who's done all that he's done, and I've been one who kind of follow in footsteps, not in everything he's done, but in many, many ways. Uh, he's been a great mentor for me. Mm -hmm. And he's given me a lot of advice along the way. And I really appreciate him very much. My pleasure. Kind soul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. We'd love to have you try to sit, Mr. Sure. Schultz. Is this? I can do that. These are kind of fancy. Yeah. I got got you. it? Yeah. Got it? No, oh, I'm fine. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, about, sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. You know, when, when we were reading your, <laughs> you're just going to be stuck with us for the rest of the day. Just don't move. Just hang with us now. Now that you're up in there comfortably. Um, to me, your story is so incredible. And you, he had a chance to play baseball, yeah. right? A hundred, I'll see, I won't even say a hundred, because <laughs> you had a chance to play baseball, to do many other things, but you chose to coach. You chose to teach. You chose to 
want to make a difference in the lives of, of young kids immediately instead of pursuing an athletic career for yourself? Why? Well, you know, the, <laughs> the Lord shapes our lives uh, with personality characteristics, uh, experiences, training, uh, to use for his purposes, and we have no idea what's ahead of us. And that's been kind of the story of my life, you know. I had, the only thing I wanted to do when I graduated from high school was to be a basketball coach. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was that uh, I grew up in a small town, and my senior year in high school, our superintendent asked me, he said, we'd like to have a junior high basketball team, but we can't afford to hire a coach. Would you be willing to come in at seven in the morning and work with the junior high kids? And I said, sure. And I just loved it. And I said, I want to be a basketball coach. And that was what I did for the first 25 years of my life. And I focused on that. You, um, you have an interesting story about John Wooden that uh, we would love for you to share with us. Well, John and I were, were very good friends, and uh, we spent a lot of time together as coaches and a lot of time together afterwards. And my first year at the NCAA was the 50th anniversary of the Final Four. And a lot of work had been done before I got there. And since the original game was in Kansas City, uh, the 50th anniversary was going to be there as well. And one day, uh, two of my staff people that had the responsibility for putting the program together came and said, you know, Dick, we've got a real problem. Uh, we can't get John Wooden to agree to come to the Final Four. And obviously, with the impact that John and UCLA had on the Final Four, if he wasn't there, the program was going to be very flat. So I said, well, uh, let me give him a call. And John's story is an interesting one because he and his wife, Nell, were very close. Nell traveled with all the games, and they had this little signal they'd, they'd switch, uh, change, just, uh, just before tip-off. John always knew where Nell was at in the stadium, and they would do that. And uh, after Nell died, he just could not bring himself to come to a Final Four. So I said, all right, I'll give John a call. And John and I visited about it, and he said, Dick, you know as well as anybody the situation. I said, John, I know that, but we've got to have you here. I'll send a private plane to pick you up. The program's going to be at the Hyatt Regency, which is 45 minutes away from the arena. You won't even have to be close to it. We'll do the program. I'll fly you home the next morning. Because if you're not there, it's going to be a bust. He said, well, I'll, I'll think about it and uh, call me back in a couple of days. So I called him back, and he says, if you can do it exactly the way you explained it, I will come. So John flew in. We had the dinner. It was a, a great dinner. And when the dinner was over, John was sitting next to me at our table. He reached over and patted me on the leg, and he said, Dick, thank you for your persistence. In other words, that was John's way of saying he was really glad he came. And then Jerry had a big influence on John, as well as I and others, to get him eventually involved with the Keys to Life Award and this program. And he's been a great part of it ever since. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, before you leave us on the stage, you have some words you want to share with our audience. We'd, we'd love to have you do that. Well, first of all, I, I'm pleased to receive the award, but I'm very embarrassed because there's so many more people that are probably more worthy for this than I am. And at first I said no. Uh, I just don't need to do this at my age. At my age, you're just glad to be seen, you know. <laughs> um, uh, 93? 93. 93. Who looks better <laughs> yeah. at 93? And, of course, one of the reasons I've made it to 93 is my wife, who's been a partner in all this. Jackie and I have been married for 73 years, 74 in June. She's yeah. right over here. Oh. Yeah.
You know, when I mentioned uh, how the Lord shapes our, our personalities, that's kind of the story of my life. I had no idea I would have the opportunity to do the things I did. Coaching, administrative work at two great institutions, Cornell University of Virginia, being chair with the selection committee, then being selected to be the only the second president of the NCAA. And then after a time of consulting, I was asked to run the Olympics, which I did for about six years. But all those things, I found out was strictly preparation that the Lord had for me. Because when I started consulting again, I spent five years uh, working with the Chinese Olympic Committee and the large government-owned corporations. I was in Beijing every other month. And then I was asked by the CEO Forum, which is an organization uh, made up of CEOs of 100 million to several billion dollar organizations that are Christians and had to have felt they needed some support. So I was asked to do some consulting for them. And what this did, this gave me the opportunity to work with business leaders in Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, mainland China, 60 in the US. And the thing that I emphasize with them more than anything else, which I would like to emphasize with you, is that the Lord has a plan for each one of us. And the important thing is to develop that personal relationship. And I would ask CEOs, do you spend time with the Lord in the morning before you go to work? And most of them would say, you know, my, my schedule is so busy, I just don't have time. And I said, look, I've been in your shoes. I know what busy is, you still have time. I said, just take five minutes mm -hmm. in the morning when you get up and Lay out your day for the Lord and ask him for guidance. And then I would usually meet with them about every three months. And when I would come back, I didn't have to ask them. They volunteered. They said the five minutes is now 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes. I find I'm making better decisions. I have a better relationship with the staff and my family. And I actually have some time to think about the big picture issues of our company and to spend time with my family. You know, it's time, if you're not there yet, to get into this great race of faith. Don't be a spectator in the grandstand. Get down on the track and start running, and run as hard as you can, because I'll tell you why. We're running for our lives. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Um. Those are incredible words, and I, and I want everyone to know that there's a, a scholarship uh, beginning, being established in your name for college athletes to participate in Athletes in Action missions, um, projects, leadership de development on every level. And, and again, it starts where? It starts with their faith and with God, and it is now in the name of Dick Schultz. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dick Schultz. Thank you. Thank you, you Dick. So much. Thank you. Thank you so much. My goodness. Seventy-three years. Is that what it is? Wow. Wow. Have you written a book yet? Can you please write, <laughs> write a book? We'll sell. You know, that, is, that is beautiful. What a yes, beautiful family. Yeah, yeah, and a great man, and did as much to develop the modern uh, NCAA basketball tournament as anybody, brought it into the modern era. So we, we thank him for all of the things he's accomplished, mm -hmm. and his words uh, this morning were powerful and impactful. Amazing. So.